Salesforce Security and Identity, Deep Dive into SAML Authentication. In today's session, we're going to be diving deep into SAML and how it fits into single sign-on SSO. And we're using Salesforce to Salesforce single sign-on as a demonstration of this. In this diagram from previous videos, I'm showing how you're going to have a Salesforce identity provider, IDP org, on the top. And then down below is a Salesforce service provider, which has data you want to get to without having to have a separate set of login credentials. Um, we talked about the, in a previous video showing how this configuration was set up. What we're going to be going through today is the detailed back and forth and how SAML is a part of that. We're going to be introducing some terms. User access. This is when a user tries to access a resource on the service provider before they have authenticated. This is them requesting a particular re a, a, you know, secure resource. Redirection. This is what, if the user isn't authenticated, the service provider will redirect them to the identity provider using a SAML request. And there may also be a, remem a, a parameter sent to remember the link the user first wanted, that's called the relay state, and then it'll go along with the SAML request. Then the IDP authenticates the user. This will be through a number of factors, uh, username, password, multi-factor. And then when the IDP has verified, it will create a SAML assertion and it'll send it back to the service provider. Whether you have the user redirection back to the service provider and then the service provider will validate the SAML assertion, extracts the user information and grants access. Now, it may also then, if the relay state had been properly sent, it'll send the relay state to the service provider and the service provider will navigate to that particular URL. The advantages of single sign-on, users can access multiple services with a single set of credentials. The, it can, the SAML uses digital signatures to ensure um, that somebody hasn't altered the SAML or faked the SAML. And interoperability is as a standard protocol it can be done with you know, different IDPs working with different tech stacks for the service providers. Key terms, the SAML request from the service provider to the IDP, SAML response, which is the message from the IDP back, the assertions which are gonna be inside, which are statements from the IDP about the user. Digital signatures are used to verify the assertions and make, make sure they're correct and they haven't been altered. There's attributes inside of a SAML response, which could be information about the user. The relay state is a URL that is passed from the service provider to the IDP and then back in order to have what's called deep links. And then the nature of setting up the SAML trust environment between the IDP and the SP. And now to look at it at a diagram, the user 1A tries to access it and then you can see that a SAML request is sent back. They're sent to the on flow 2A and 2B to the IDP. Then a SAML assertion is sent back. And then three, they come back into the Salesforce you know, auth server. And then in step four, they get a valid session. These are the flows. And from a user's point of view, it is navigating to a link. And then the redirects are almost transparent. They get a login screen. And then once they log in, then they get to see the original asset that they were intended to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this using a previous uh, Salesforce to Salesforce environment I had set up. Now, what I have here is Firefox, and I have installed the SAML tracer so we can watch the back and forth. I'm going to paste in the URL for a service provider Salesforce, which has been set up with a single sign-on environment. And now we can see the get statements. So far, the SAML exchange has not happened. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger a login through the IDP that I had set up in the Salesforce to Salesforce environment. So if I'm going to click here, we're going to start to see the SAML request going over to the IDP. So I press the button. And now you'll notice that the URL has changed to the IDP. And if we look in the SAML, in this request, we actually see a SAML indicator up here. 
So if I click on it, I can actually see the SAML assertion that was sent. So this IDP has been sent through from the service provider with a SAML assertion, SAML request. So I'm entering in a user on the IDP who is also set up with single sign-on to the service provider and I'm hitting login. And now I'm logged into the SP, but what you didn't see quickly, what you saw quickly was a redirect back to the service provider. So this completed the login back to the homepage of the service provider. So it created a transparent experience starting at the service provider, going to the IDP, doing the login and coming back again. And if we look up here, we see the sequence of events. There's our original SAML request, but now I can look down here and see the SAML response, which has gone back, which has then actually been the keys that has let um, the, I, the service provider trust the response from the IDP. Let us take a look into, the, into that in detail. So all I've done is cut and pasted this. And now what you can see, and I've shortened it a little bit, what we see is this is what's being sent from the service provider to the IDP. And you can see that it's an auth request. You're saying it's the assertion with Steve Tech Arc, the service provider. It has the destination of the IDP. You can see that in the URL. It has a unique ID. It also has an issuant timestamp and the protocol binding using the post. And it's an assertion, and it's assertion um, coming from the um, service provider. So this is the SAML request being sent to the IDP. Now we're going to take a look at the SAML response. So this is the actual SAML that unlocked access into the service provider. This is the one that is the one that needs to be most secure. So as we look at this, we see the destination is the service provider. So this is sent from the IDP to the service provider. It's in response to, and this was the long ID to the original SAML request. I shortened it. We have a timestamp. Now timestamps are very important because you need to worry about an attack such as what's called a replay attack. Somebody catching the SAML uh, you know, assertion, holding on to it and playing it back in the future. And so what happens is there are narrow windows of time between that this is valid, me typically measured in minutes. And that's why it's very important that the clocks on the IDP and the clocks on the service provider computers be accurate because otherwise they could be a, you could get no proper sign in because of the clock differentials. So you need the, is the issue an instant to make sure it's valid. We know it where it came from. I mean, where it's going to is the destination. Down here, you'll see the named identity who is saying that this assertion is correct, the issuer, and I bolded it to show it's the IDP. Then what we've done is this has been signed using a digital certificate, um, and this is ensuring that this has not been altered. And you need to describe the algorithm method for the signature. So in this case, it's R R RSA SH1, um, and it gives the details on the transformation. And I've shortened up the digital signature so that it wouldn't, uh, here it is a signature value, so it would fit on the screen. So this information ensures that the data has not been altered. So we have a replay attack where someone can replay a previous assertion. We also have somebody that can inter intercept a SAML request and alter it. So by using a digital signature, this can ensure um, with the shared digital certificate on both the IDP and the service provider that it hasn't been altered, okay? So then we come down here, we have the issuer and the issuer was the IDP, additional more signatures to ensure it hasn't been altered. We then now know um, who is being logged in. And this Homer is the shared federated ID between the user in the IDP and the user in the um, service provider. So this is what would be in the value of the federated ID field. Now you'll also want to control the windows. This of time, this has the not on or after to prevent this from being valid after a certain time. 
It's also saying the recipient. So this targeted assertion is, should only be valid on SP1. If you had multiple SPs, multiple service providers, this assertion should not get them in. This should only be valid for SP1. You'll see more uh, assertions on time, narrowing not on or before, uh, uh, narrowing the time. You'll see the off instant and the audience restriction, who this is being narrowed down to. So we're, we're, we're saying that this is a message from the IDP to SP1. It's only good for a short period of time. Um, and now we're saying what time it was, and then more signatures. And then down here, we start to get into additional attributes. These are attributes that can be sent across. Right now, we know the username coming from the Homer in the IDP. We know the email address, and we know a flag where whether it's a portal user. And you can configure additional attributes to be sent in the SAML assertion. So these are the details of a SAML assertion being passed from the IDP to the service provider. So as you learn your single sign-on, you see the flow going between the service provider and the IDP using redirects. The, what's being passed around is the SAML, which is an XML file, which contains key elements, a SAML assertion for saying that this person is valid. And prior to that, a SAML request asking for somebody to be validated. We've gone through the contents of the SAML. So now you know what's inside of it and it's protected by a, dig a shared digital certificate between the, S the service provider and the IDP. So it's not magic, but what it, it is technology and it's been designed to prevent against attacks such as a man in the middle or a replay attack. Um, and it allows many service providers to link to different tech stacks for IDPs. I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much. And go have smooth sailing with SAML. Join me again. Um, subscribe for more uh, videos that are coming soon. Same And join again, same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you very much.